Now that the painting has sat overnight, it's had a chance to dry out slightly. The thicker areas are still wet enough that I can rework them, while the thinner areas are dry and I can apply fresh paint over them. It's just tacky enough to have some pull to the brush. Now this area got kind of contaminated with the yellow and turned green, so I'm going to come back in and re-clean that with just white, ultramarine blue, and a touch of phthalo blue, and paint right back into that. Now as I'm repainting the sky, I'm also thinking once again about the shape of the hill beneath. and also the shape of the trees. I'm going to work some sky color back into the trees. And now with a clean brush, I'm just going to come back in and kind of reshape some of these trees with the paint that's still wet. Mixing up ultramarine blue and cadmium orange, I'm going to lightly indicate some of the tree trunks in the distant trees. I'm using the corner of my brush to just slightly pull the color up, or else I can pull it down from the top. Now this area needs to be a little darker and it will also help separate this mass of trees from this group of trees. Now I'm going to come back with some bright yellow, just with yellow and white, and start hitting the highlights on these different sets of trees. I'm going to hit the trees back here on the very distance first, and then reshape some of these, giving them a little more definite shape in the, in the background. And once again come to the closer trees. I'm adding orange just to give it a little darker value as I come across. Maybe a slight touch of blue. This will help give the trees form and dimension. I'm not painting individual leaves. I'm painting masses, but you can see every once in a while I'll leave a single dot just to indicate a leaf. Slight touch of red added back here where they, the two trees meet, just to keep them separated. Carry that, some of that into the reflection. A little dark along this river bank will give it some form. And darker here. The darkest part of the shadows lies right here in the foreground. And since I've already got dark on my brush, I'm just going to add a touch more orange and run it into this light blue to make a lighter color to put on the side of the tree trunks.
Now I don't want to call too much attention to these dark trees because I want the eye to look at the reflection and the trees in the middle ground. So even though these are really dark, I'm going to understate them as not to distract the tension from back here. I'm mixing up a highlight now to put on the grass in the foreground to highlight some of this, the angle of this ground as it slopes. And then it drops off right here. So I'm going to darken this little section. As it comes down. Get a little of this tan color back up in here. And highlight the, the, the slope, the drop off. Just slightly, because I don't want to, here again, I don't want to cause attention here because of this light and this dark when I want the focus to come back into here. I'm going to work just a little bit of green into some of this just to give us a little variety of color. And I want to hit the water now with a little bit lighter blue in the distance. Back in here. A lot of up and down strokes will help give the impression of water also. or if the water is moving, strokes in the direction that it's moving. Kind of let these merge together. And darken the water here in the foreground. I'm going to go ahead and add some more blue to this distant ridge right here, just to separate it even more from the orange trees. Maybe work in some of the background mountain in these trees. Don't want to go too dark. Just dark enough to indicate that the hill continues on behind the trees. And a highlight on the grass in the distance. some rocks in the water and I want to hit them really quickly. They're kind of a cool purple. So we're going to mix it up with red and blue and a mixture of these other colors in here to keep it from being too bright. And just indicate them over along the shoreline. Put a little more blue and a touch of this orange. Kind of run a little darker edge under them. And then just a slight touch of a lighter color and right along the top edge. And come back with just a little bit more blue to indicate the water in the distance again. Maybe a little bit in the foreground here, just to tie the two sides together. And that brings this scene to completion. There are many different ways to begin a painting. However, the important thing is to treat everything simply and think of geometric shapes. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed being here. Thank you.
now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.